Hey, welcome guys, it's Slider Havoc here, and we are doing part two of our Draconic Evolution tutorial series. And today we're going to be going over the fun blocks that are incorporated within the mod. Now, I am going to remind you, because I, I get comments about this from different people, about how, you know, how do I get this, how do I get that. These are late game items. These are not early game items. Well, maybe not necessarily late game, but mid game at the very best. Um, they are, they are definitely items that you're gonna, you're gonna have to work to get, plain and simple. You're definitely gonna have to work to get. But, uh, anyways, we're gonna jump right in with some of the fun blocks as well as some of the fun items that get added in. Now, the first one I want to put down is, is that, I'm on it right there, nope, this guy right here, is the generator. There is a power system incorporated in it. Uh, in the mod and it's actually pretty simple to make pretty easy to make to get some power right off the bat uh, it just takes one draconic core which will once again cost you a diamond but um, a couple iron ingots a furnace and some nether brick and you will get this generator and as you right click on the generator you'll see it's got a GUI where basically you add coal to get power so any burnable material I do believe wood works as well to be honest with you, I've never actually tried it. I always put coal in, but any burnable material will burn up and it will uh, start providing you with RF, right? And the reason I use this one first is because I want to get into these guys right here, which means we're going to connect our next item that we're going to go over, which also can use coal, but it can also receive RF power. And that is the grinder. The mob grinder is epically sweet. Oh, I did forget to point out, and you can see it in YLA as well as here. The blue is kind of difficult to see, but it has a storage buffer of 100,000 RF. So, I mean, it's a decent amount of RF, and it's filling up pretty quickly. It's already over 50,000. It's gone through 14 pieces of wood, so it's decent. It's a decent amount of power to start off with. Uh, coal would obviously be highly efficient, and, you know, usually by the time you start getting into this stuff, you've probably got plenty of coal backed up, so... Now, the mob grinder, the mob grinder can also have a burnable material added in. But it also has the option of basically receiving RF, and that's where these guys come into play. The enemy transceiver and the advanced energy transceivers. Now, an energy transceiver has the ability to transfer power over 25 blocks. So, if I grab a tape measure real quick, I'm sure Bibliocraft has one, right? Yeah. So, if I grab this tape measure, and we go ahead and start our measurement right here and we're gonna go out make sure I do measure this right so we're right on top of it at 66 that's not the number that's changing <laughs> we're right on top of it at 305 okay so if we go out to 330 which well it's telling me my meters right there so okay so this is 26 meters right here let's go ahead and I've already got a mob grinder down so let me just grab some sand real quick and I'm just going to put a pillar here so we can kind of get a visual representation. And we'll put one right in front of it. That's one lower so we can kind of see. So if I was, this is, eh, there we go. This is I'm at 25 meters. This is I'm at 26. This is what we want to see. So if I put an energy transceiver on this block right here, and I put one right here, we should see that this guy will connect to energy, whereas this guy won't. And the way we connect is with the crystal binder. And the crystal binder is basically kind of like a wrench for the mod, but it's only really useful for the power. But it does work like a wrench on other blocks, so we'll spin them around and stuff like that like other mods do. So it has four modes. It's got bind, oh sorry, unbind, unbind all, change mode, and bind. Okay, so right now we're going to try to bind this guy over here to this guy and you'll see that the connection is made and as long as the wrench is in your hand you can visually see the connections wherever you go and if the wrench is not in your hand you don't see it so it's not an annoying thing all the time but now we're going to bind this one and try to bind to this guy here and you'll see this is target out of range so it is 25 blocks not 26 however there is this guy right here called the energy relay and the energy relay can go right here and then we can bind him over to this power source over here and we'll see that it will light up just like so and now we can go out an additional 25 blocks or however far we want to go we'll just put a, a transceiver right here and we give a little clicky click on this guy and bind it to this guy and with just one block in the middle that is now able to stretch a span of 50 blocks pretty freaking sweet okay 
That means no cables, no wires, no nothing. The, the It does not matter if there are blocks in the middle. Let me go ahead and uh, just grab a grass block and kind of show this. You know me, I like to do proof of concepts. And basically, we're going to go ahead and put these up in the way and completely block off all of the straight line so we know for sure that it can't see it and as I bring it out you'll see that they are still connected the power lines will go right through blocks no problem and they will continue to work and basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that it's actually receiving power right now you can see this currently has zero RF and the reason is it's because this guy over here is set to input initially or sorry output initially these are kind of backwards if you think about them Right now, if you see in the HUD up there, it says RF0, capacity 0, and it's set to output. What it's basically saying is this right here is outputting power to whatever it's connected to. <laughs> so if I click on, uh, right click on it, when I go to change mode, or sorry, mode change, and I right click, now you see it goes to input. You'll see the generator is now kicking on. It now has RF, and it is sending it out to this guy over here. And you'll see that this one now has RF stored in it. I do believe that these uh, have a capacity of uh, 50,000 RF, so not too bad to hold 50,000 in the transceiver itself. Pretty, pretty freaking sweet. Pretty sweet, right? And like I said, this guy right here also receives power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to unbind all real quick and disconnect this guy because as you can see, it only gets two connections and it was currently connected to two, all right? But I want to show you this wireless uh, energy transceiver because like I showed you if I stick this guy on here and I go back to bind mode and click here and here it's already set to input mode and this one's set to output mode so it's outputting into the mob grinder as you can see the mob grinder is now gaining RF pretty sweet I want to keep make sure it's at zero uh, yeah still have a little space but this guy is even cooler than that you don't even have to have a transceiver actually connected if you've got this wireless transceiver this wireless transceiver has the same 25 block radius, but what this one can do is it can receive power from something like, let me see, change mode to bind. I can send energy to this guy like that. And then if I bind, try to bind him, all I gotta do is just right click on this item and you'll see it says devices linked and now it's filled up with power. As you saw before, it wasn't totally full. It is actually getting power right now as we uh, as we speak, but this is maxed out, so we can't actually witness it. So let me go ahead and throw a couple pigs on the ground because this is how cool. I really love 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 this grinder. This grinder is absolutely awesome. If you shift right click on it um, with something that's not going to place on it, uh, like with the hammer. Oh nope, that's not going to work either. Can I get an empty hand? Let's do an empty hand. Shift right click. It's going to show you the area of effect that it works in. It works in a seven by seven by five area and it will basically vaporize any mobs that are in this area. So if I go down and put a couple pigs, they met their match. Now he got out of there in time. He's lucky, but obviously our mob farms are going to keep them contained and it just wipes them out. Now there is no auto collect feature or anything like that. So you will have to be able to manually collect. But a nice feature added to this is if you're not there to pick up the items, the items will only stay on the ground for 30 seconds. Um, now, I shouldn't say items. I know the experience orbs. That is true. The experience orbs will only stay on the ground for 30 seconds. I don't know the extent of the items, so we might give that a second. I never actually tested it out until I set it right now. But uh, as you can see, this is still at 100,000 RF because he is getting power from this wireless transceiver. Now, the one thing that I've never seemed to quite get to work right is this if i want to connect him to this guy hey position saved like that it's not doing it yeah see that was that was the problem i had before um let me let's go unbind all real quick so there's zero connections okay and then we're gonna go to bind mode and we're gonna bind you to him and to him and it doesn't work that way it does have to have a transceiver i was pretty sure but i wanted to make positive um, because something else made me think that it did work. Okay, so the experience orbs are gone, but the food's still there. So the bacon stays, but the experience orbs go. Now, with the advanced transceivers, there's uh, a couple major differences. So you've got the regular transceiver right here. It has the ability to have two connections. 
The advanced transceiver now has the ability for four connections and stretches a, st a span of 50 blocks. So, without actually showing, well, I don't need to show you. You guys know the deal. It can go all the way over to that far one that I set over there that is connected to the relay and basically do it in one shot. And then it's also got the relay, which will extend it to up to 100, which is pretty freaking awesome. And also the advanced wireless will also span out to 50, and it serves the same exact purpose. So basically, we little do a little right-click there, right-click there, it's bonded. And this guy can actually have 16 wireless connections. If you can think about how amazing that is, this can get energy from six different places, and it can put out to 16 different items. You could power an entire, like, you know... Uh, industrial area where you have all your pulverizers and redstone furnaces and induction furnaces and sag mills and whatever you've got this guy can charge 16 of them from a central location just by outputting energy uh, like like that and put the pigs watch him go deceased there we go and get him out of here and it just keeps it charged pretty sweet the the system is absolutely amazing the fact that you don't have to have wires and cables all over the place and you can do everything with just a beam of light awesome 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 so that's the mob grinder the generator and the power the next thing we're going to get into is the sundial and the weather controller these guys are pretty cool once again I'm not gonna show the recipes but they're a little more pricey on the um thing but i think you'll understand why in just a second when i grab myself a lever as well as a sundial because once oh well yeah I don't need the crystal binder anymore and uh, the sundial does not have a GUI where the weather controller does and I'm actually only opening this one because I want to get this guy not sun rain that's what I want I want the rain detector from Draconic as well I forgot to grab that earlier all right so the sundial is pretty cool right now my son is currently over here at 6 a.m. in the morning because I locked my time and you know I didn't want to move while we were recording. If I throw a switch right here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of fire shoot out. It's gonna grab the sun and it's gonna start moving the sun through the sky and it will literally rotate it all the way around. Pretty freaking epic chaos if you ask me. You can set it to the exact time you want and if you got like if you're doing witchery or you're doing something that needs a time sensitive thing you can literally just kind of lock the time into right where you want if you miss it just bring it back around really quickly pretty cool now the weather i need to grab one more thing the weather can turn rain off turn rain on and create thunderstorms this thing i could see so many uses for um, especially since i like witchery and there's a lot of fun stuff to do with witchery where you need nighttime and thunderstorms and stuff like that but uh, this guy is, for all intents and purposes, the best thing in the world for turning off rain. If you hate rain like I hate rain, it's very, very useful. Now you see I put one emerald in and it gives me 10 charges. So if you had a stack of emeralds, this thing would pretty much last for the entire time you were on a server or on a single player world. Because honestly, how many times are you going to have to turn off the rain 640 different times? Actually on my server, probably a lot. So maybe it wouldn't last all that long. But... 10 charges per emerald allows you to turn the rain on and off and make thunderstorms and then you can just place this redstone uh sorry the rain sensor from draconic evolution which if it receives rain puts out a redstone signal will then trigger this to turn the rain off so we can do a real quick demonstration by making it rain and then the animation's awesome rain sensor goes off and it just shoots all these fireballs up into the sky and within a couple seconds the rain has ceased to exist what in the world was that? Nom 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 nom. Uh, it was a pig eating? I don't know. That was really funny though. But anyway, so that is the uh, weather controller and the sundial. They're pretty freaking epic blocks as well. Now, moving on, we're going to do the player detector. And uh, then we'll get into some of the fun small items. And then we'll probably be done for the day with this episode. Player detector, like any other player detector, basically... If you're within range of the status right now, you just right click on it. There's no GUI. You just have a range from one block up to 10 blocks. And basically once you're out of range, it turns off. And when you're in range, it turns on. 
and that's basically it. And it does emit a redstone when the signal goes off. So if you want, you know, to make like magic or you know, hidden doors and stuff like that that are based upon you know player detection, that is obviously a really useful thing for that. However, my thing is, once you can make this guy, you'll probably want to make this guy because this guy is way more advanced and really really cool. This guy has a range up to 20, so from 1 to 20. It does have a blacklist and a whitelist, which is uh, just toggled by this exclamation point. So you basically can say, you know, whitelist whoever, you know, y'all know how whitelist and blacklist work. And then also it gives you the ability to invert an output, uh, invert the output signal. So either always on or always off unless triggered. Really, really cool. The coolest thing about this block for me is the fact that it does this. It has a camouflage. If I drop a sand up here in the camouflage, now the block looks and acts all intent like a piece of sand. And if I were in creative mode, or sorry, in single player mode, that's about the only time you're going to see a difference is because <clears throat> it technically is not sand and it doesn't do the sand sounds like that. So, and the progress is really, really slow on it. But that's cool because you won't accidentally break it. Now, if you have a draconic pick or something like that, you might break it. You know, things happen. So that is the, uh, the uh, advanced player detector. Now for some of the more fun and goofy items in the mod, which, well, I shouldn't say goofy, but they're kind of they're kind of interesting. Um, we're going to go ahead and get all this stuff out of the way because we are going to grab the safety match as well as the box of safety matches. We are going to grab the uh, distortion flame, which I absolutely love. And where are some of the other fun ones? Um... There was just a couple items, not a lot. Oh, the Disenchanter, as well as the Energy Infuser. And, oh, the Potentiometer. Oh, see, it started to rain, wasn't having it, and the rain is now turned off. Absolutely amazing. Such a cool block. But now, for the box of safety matches. Or safety matches. Safety matches are cool. You can light a fire that actually won't burn wood. It just creates a fire. Uh, how many times have you burnt your house down or burnt something down because you weren't realizing that the flame you've created was in range to do some damage? Really annoying when that happens. And then basically the box of safety matches is just nine safety matches. Put in a crafting grid and you get a box of safety matches. And basically it works like a flint and steel for you. But as I said, you don't have to worry about burning anything down. They don't burn. Pretty freaking snazzy. Now for this one, I'm going to switch back to creative because I want to put a couple of them down. The distortion flame, it seems like it doesn't do anything until you realize it's actually giving me x-ray. It's actually technically the little block above, but it turns whatever block it's adjacent to into an x-ray block. So if I put it here, it's going to turn all three of these into x-ray blocks. So you can kind of see off in the distance over there, if I place some more, you're going to get full on x-ray off into the distance over there. So you can see that there's a ravine right there. There is a ravine which looks like it's part of a cave system right there. And you can basically put down as many of these as you really want. And just go to town. And kind of see all around. Now, the thing about these is these can only be picked up by the Draconic Pick. So if you use anything other than the Draconic Pick, and I don't know why I just did that. Um, it will break them and they will go away. But if you use a Draconic Pick, it will actually pick the item back up for you. And that's pretty cool. Let me get into survival so you believe me here. And that basically just picks them right up. And then you can uh, go put them down in another location. And it's just a little clicky click and it picks them right up for you. So the distortion flame I could definitely see a lot of use for. Especially on a multiplayer server. Especially on a PvP multiplayer server. You can definitely use it to find underground bases and all that fun stuff. And it would be kind of entertaining. So that is the uh, <coughs> Distortion Flame. Now the Disenchanter works like almost any other Disenchanter. For a cost, you can put in an item that's enchanted, put in a book, it'll give you a cost here, you pull the book out, and there you go. You disenchanted it, and you can get the book. Now, if you're using Draconic stuff, you don't have to worry about it, because you can just go to your GUI here, and, you know, take the books in and out like I had showed you before. But if you've got something cool on a vanilla one that you want to transfer over, the Disenchanter would obviously come in handy for that. Now the energy infuser. The energy infuser is one that I wanted to show you earlier. This is one of the easiest ways. Well, I shouldn't say easy because it's not cheap to make, but it's one of the, I guess, better ways 
uh, that you can actually get um, those charged draconium blocks that we had earlier. So if I grab that binding crystal again real quick. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there it is. And uh, give a little right click on like the wireless and click on him here. And it's linked and you'll see the power will start going over to this guy. And it's slowly going up. And then basically you just throw in your draconium block and it will start charging it. Now, these blocks take a lot to charge. I didn't mention it before, but it's 100,000, or sorry, 100 million RF to charge one draconium block. So it takes a while. So you're gonna need a large power source or a large backlog of power to get these done quickly. But, you know, if all you have is the generator, set it down and come back in a couple hours because you're only getting a, <laughs> a couple RF per tick, basically. I don't know what the RF per tick is on the generator, but it's not a lot by any means. Oh, and it's all out too, so that doesn't help. Um, let's see if that speeds up the process at all, if I throw like a block of coal in there. There we go. So it's got a little bit better. Oh, and I did forget to show one thing while we're doing this. Um, as you can see, it's in output mode right now. Um, but if we go to right click, we can actually, oh, I need uh, the change mode. So output times five we can input and we can input times five. So that's way faster basically, um, you know, well, I want you on output, not input, but I want you on output times five. No, I do want you on input. So I get backwards on the input and output concept. It's, it's kind of interesting because like I said, it's actually the input is inputting from whatever it's connected to or outputting to whatever it's connected to. It has nothing to do with these lines here. It's all about what it's connected to. So it's currently outputting, or sorry, inputting uh, from this and then distributing energy out to there. And then as you can see, this guy is currently at zero because it is putting all of its energy into the block. Not a lot of energy being created, but you know, it's it's a way to start, you know, getting it. And if you're playing in a mod pack that's uh, limited on like power source and stuff like that, it's obviously an option. Now, the last block I gotta show you for today is the potentiometer. Um, this one right here, I will tell you, I have really not found a use for myself, but it's pretty cool. <clears throat> if you'd like to do redstone and you know for different levels of power that you need, um, basically it lets you go through power levels 1 through 15, and as you can see the numbers are counting up. And so I'm up to 15, and it's pulling out a full 15 RF, or, uh, redstone signal. And if you hold shift and right click, you can just take it right back down through the spectrum, back down to zero. So that's the potentiometer. Uh, like I said, I have nothing against the block. I just don't know what I would personally use it for. I do some redstone building, but I don't see it being all that useful for me personally. So, yeah, that is all the fun uh, blocks and doodads that the mod has to offer. And then the next uh, part, we're actually going to go over energy, energy storage, as well as energy creation. And then we might have a very big and powerful ending to that one. So... Until next time, guys, y'all know the deal. I am Slider Havoc, and I am out of here. Peace.